Hey, what is going on guys? It's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make modded updates for your games much, much faster because I've made a new program that should make it much quicker to build modded update package files that you can use to patch the game with any mods that you've installed. So for example, if you're porting mods from the PC version of Fallout 4 or Skyrim to run on the PS4 version, you would use a modded update. There's also, I think, some fighting games that you can do the same thing on. Um, games like um, Dead Island and Dying Light, the developer menus that Death RGH ported over, uh, was done with a modded update. And uh, even if you're just wanting to customize the game, if you don't have any mods, you can customize the game, like change the cutscenes or the loading images or the loading um, videos or the main menu background animations, that kind of stuff. You can swap that stuff out as well using a modded update. Now you can either use a modded update or use try and use Orbis AFR, but Orbis AFR, which is a payload that kind of swaps the game files out, like layered FS for the Switch. Um, it's really buggy and it's, you know, it's just not a finished um, thing. So it's it crashes a lot of the time. So most people are not going to use that. So you're probably going to try and make a modded update instead. But making a modded update up until this point, it's just been so convoluted. It takes a lot of different steps that you have to go through to actually build the modded update. So this program just, you know, does all of that stuff for you so you can get a modded update built much, much faster. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a modded update for a game that is on the base version and has no, you know, official updates installed and how to make a modded update uh, with a game that's already on an official patch that already has an official patch installed, Fallout 4 1.20. Um, so I'm going to show you how to use the tool to build modded updates for both a game that has no patches installed currently and a game that has a patch installed already. So starting off with Killing Floor 2 here. Now I don't have any mods for this game, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out this video that's playing in the background in the main menu. So I've got the main menu here. It says Killing Floor 2. This is just a video file that can easily be replaced. So that's what we're going to do with this one first of all. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and close the application. Okay, so moving over to the computer here, you can see I've got the package file for the game, Killing Floor 2. So I'm going to run the PS4 Patch Builder, which is the program to build the modded update package files. But I did also include the ability to extract the package files as well. So you can do both from within the one tool. Um, you can, of course, use another program if you want to extract the package files like Orbis Pub Check. So we're going to drag the package file into package extraction. If you can't drag and drop, just click the button to browse for it and then extract the package file. And then because we're doing the base version of the game, we don't want to extract the entire package file because that's 9.4 gigs. So we only want to extract um, the files that we need to build a modded update with. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the eboot.bin, which is the main executable for the game. Then we're also going to select uh, SC0 folder SCE system folder and the SCE module folder. Um, those are the required files. And then, you know, any file that you're going to replace, you also want to extract. So I'm going to extract the main menu background video, which is this file here. So it's in movies menu BG for menu background.bic. And then we'll go ahead and just export those files to the same directory as the package file. So there we go. It's only going to take a few seconds because there's only a few files that we're extracting. So we've got image zero and then we've got our the background image. So if I run this or the background video, so there it is there, the main menu background video. And then, of course, we've got SCE module, SCE system, eboot.bin and the SC0 folder all extracted. OK, so now that we have the files extracted, we're going to go into the image zero folder and we're going to find the video file that I'm going to replace. And then we're going to find a video on my computer. So I've got my uh, outro video, uh, the red one for the Nintendo Switch. And I'm going to use that as the background uh, video, just as an example. So this is obviously not the right format. This is an AVI file. This is a .bic file. But you can use a program called uh, Rad Video Tools, which I'll link in the description. Uh, which can convert it to the to the right format, the, a BINK video file, which is what a lot of games on consoles use for their videos. They use .bic files. So all you have to do is select the video, select BINK it, and then uh, just select BINK, and that will convert it. So there you go. You can see there it's compressing the video and converting it to a .bic. Okay, so there we go. So now it's converted the file into a .bic file. 
plays just the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this file in here and rename it to the same name as the original background video and delete the original background video. Give this one the same name and that should work. If we recompile this back into an update and patch the game with it, we should now have that video playing in the background instead of the normal background video. Okay, so now that we've got the video file added, we can build the modded update. So this is how this program works, the main function of it to build the modded patch. All you have to do is drag in your image zero into the project file path, and then add the original game package file that the app is designed to patch, or the patch is designed to patch, um, which is the kf2.package file. It increments the version number for you, so it puts it one higher than the current version number. Um, so that it will successfully patch the the game and then all you have to do is click build package file That's it. No other steps required just that so you can see there the package file has been built and it's done um, Or just about done. There we go. Now it's done. So it creates a log and another text file You can delete those all you need is the actual package file and that's it It was as quick as that to build the modded update package file. So now we can go into um, like the remote package installer and install this package file. So I'll just drag the package file over install package.bat and that'll start installing it. There we go. And if we go back over here to the uh, PS4, you can see 1.01 has been added to downloads and it's only 100 megabytes, so it should finish pretty much instantly. There we go, done. You can now close out with the remote package installer, check that it's been patched and it has. You can see version number is now 1.01. .01. So now we run the game and see if our video file has been swapped out here. Okay, here we go. So press start, and there it is. The video file is playing right there in the background. But yeah, so there you go. Um, if it's slightly cut off to the side, I don't know, that's some weird issue with the capture card, but um, as you can see, it works. We've got the video file here playing as the main menu background video. So yeah, you can do kind of crazy stuff like that if you want, swap out cutscenes, uh, even the loading animations that appear at the start of a game, you know, you could maybe um, get rid of those or replace them with a video file that's only like a second long so that it boots into the main menu faster. Any of that kind of stuff you can do with a modded update, but let's look at actually adding some proper mods to a game like uh, Fallout 4 for example. So that was swapping something out there with a modded update on a game that was on the base version and we created a patch for the base version to patch out that video file and replace it. But right here we're in Fallout 4 as you can see everything is normal. I don't have any um, any you know weapons, any modded weapons. I don't have uh, the cheat terminal installed or a Pip-Boy skin or any of that stuff. And Fallout 4 right here is on uh, version 1.20 so it already has an official patch installed for the game plus I've got all the DLC installed as well. So let's look at how to make a modded update um, for this. So again we're going to go ahead and I'll just run the remote package installer because we're going to be using this of course again. So for making a modded update for a game that already has an official patch you need the official patch package file as well because that is the file that we're going to base our modded update on the actual update that's currently installed rather than the original game like we did with Killing Floor 2. Um, so we're going to be extracting this package file and we want to extract the entire package file. So we're going to go back here into um, PS4 Patch Builder. We can clear the project and then drag in uh, Fallout 4 1.20, extract package file, and then we'll just select everything. And I'll create a new folder called um, modded update and we'll extract everything in here so export files and that will extract the contents of that uh, patch into this folder right here okay so there we go so once it's extracted we can go ahead and start adding our modded files into image zero um, I'm not going to show you how to convert Fallout 4 mods in this video because I did a whole long video on how to do that so I'm just going to take mods that I've already converted and put them in here so I'm going to add a bunch of mods, um, the same mods I, I did in my video on how to convert them. We're just going to reinstall those. So I'm going to put them in here. So a bunch of stuff in the data folder like the ESP files and textures and stuff like that. I'm going to add them in here. And then of course I'm also going to need to grab my Fallout 4 CCC and Fallout 4.ini file, the modified ones, and add them in here. So once you've got your modded files added to your project, we can go ahead and build the modded update again. 
And just a reminder to, of how much simpler it is using this program instead of the old method. With the old method, you used to have to copy all the contents of SC0 into the SCE system folder. Then you'd have to open uh, the image zero folder in gen gp4 and generate a gp4 file. Then you'd have to go to the XML data in that gp4 file and change uh, package underscore app to package underscore patch. Then you'd have to change digital 50 to digital 25 and then save the gp4 file. Then you had to edit the param.sfo to increment the version number to something higher than the current version, which is 1.20. So you'd have to change it to 1.21 in a hex editor and then change the GD to GP for game patch and then save the param.sfo. Then you could open the uh, GP4 file in um, Orbis Pub Gen and then you'd have to go to command project settings and add the original package file that the app is, that, that the patch is designed to update and then you could generate your package file. And you'd have to do that every single time you added more files to the project to create another uh, update. Every single time you'd have to go through all of those steps, which is kind of ridiculous. With this, all you have to do is drag in the image zero folder and then drag in the original game package file, not the update that, we're, that we extracted, but the original game package file uh, that the patch is designed to update. And there we go, it increments the version number for you. And then all you have to do is click build package file and that will build the modded update for you, skipping all of those steps. But there are some other optional f things that you can add as well. For example, if you want to replace the image file, you can replace uh, your icon with a different image. So we'll add this uh, <laughs> Todd Howard, um, it just works uh, image file for Fallout 4. So we'll put that in as our image file. And then you can also edit the patch notes as well. Now patch notes are useful if you're gonna be releasing your modded update to the public. It's a way of letting them know what you've changed within the game, what your update actually does. So for example, we can put modded update to let people know it's a modded update. And then we can say, you know, some of the stuff that we've added, uh, like cheat terminal and, uh, you know, new weapons. Um, I think I added C, B, B, E. I think I also added a, a pit boy skin. Pit boy skin. And some texture replacements. I think it's Tuki's grass and plant textures. So, you know, you can just add a bunch of stuff in here to let people know what you've changed. So that way, when they go to update history, they can see what's what's actually changed within the game. And then we can just build the package file. Yeah, if we go here, we can see modded update. You can see the package file being built. Remember, this is a four gigabyte um, patch. We're rebuilding this four gigabyte patch. So it may take a bit longer here to, uh, to actually build the package file. Okay, there we go. So it's done. So yeah, that took about, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. So once that's done, we can go ahead and install this. So I'm gonna install the patch with the remote package installer, which I, still have running right now so I'm just going to go ahead and drag this on install package.bat and if we head over to the PS4 you'll be able to see here that the icon shows up there and it's added to downloads version 1.21 so now we can uh, just wait for it to install it's going to take a little while because it's a four gigabyte package file but as you can see it's going to take less than a minute because I've got the faster transfer speeds with the remote package installer. If you're wondering how to get really fast transfer speeds with the remote package installer here, then I've already done a video on that and I'll link it um, on in the cards in the top right hand corner and possibly in the description as well. So any second now we should see the icon change as soon as the, the patch has been properly installed. There we go, just changed right there. And now if I go to... Um, you know, information, we can see it says we're on 1.21 now. And if I go to update history, you can see our patch notes have been added there at the top. So 1.21, modded update, added cheat terminal, new weapon, CBBE, pit boy skin, and two geese grass and plant textures. Um, so there you go. So that's just useful, you know, again, if you're making, if you're releasing this to the public, it's nice to have the patch notes there so that they can check themselves with the update history and see what um, your modded patch has actually done to the game. So now we can run it and hopefully our mods should all be running and working in game. Okay, so loading into the game here, as you can see, we've got our green grass and plants. So that's worked. We've got our pit boy skin. So everything seems to be working um, as far as I can tell. Uh, let's see if I go to inventory. 
We've got the cheat terminal. So that's in there. So everything is working. We've successfully patched the game with our mods right here. So yeah, that's basically it guys. That is how you create a modded update using um, the PS4 patch builder. So I hope you guys enjoy the program. Hopefully it does help you guys out with making modded updates because it's now much, much faster and easier, um, or it should be. So um, if there are any problems with the program, because I was only able to test it on about four or five games, um, but you know, it should work with all games. But if there's any issues, just let me know. I'll release a fix if there is a problem, but hopefully it should be fine. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. The link to the program will be in the description and I'll see you guys in the next video.